Hi everybody, this is Molly McCord. Welcome to my latest video where we're going to take a look at the Capricorn full moon lunar eclipse. And this is coming up July 16th, 2019, 5.38 p.m. That's Eastern Daylight Savings Time. So make sure you adjust this time for your time zone and location on the planet. And we have quite an intense lunar eclipse here that we're going to dive into and take a look at. And I have to tell you that as I'm doing this, I live in Florida and there is this really intense storm happening as I'm recording this video, lots of thunder. And I thought that was actually appropriate for this energy. And I decided to just film this video with the thunder, lightning, and rain happening uh, because it's some, it fits this energy. And I'm going to explain why. So every full moon is when the sun and the moon are in opposite points in the sky. And we have a full moon usually once a month and it illuminates, it reveals, we see something we didn't see before. And in this case, we have the sun at 24 degrees of Cancer, the moon at 24 degrees of Capricorn. The full moon is conjunct Pluto at 21 degrees of Capricorn retrograde. The full moon is ruled by Saturn because Saturn rules Capricorn and Saturn is at 16 degrees Capricorn retrograde and is also exactly conjunct or, or yes conjunct the south node which is here's the north node so the south node would be at 17 degrees of Capricorn right here. Team Capricorn as I like to say, is really being amplified in this lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipses are the bigger revelations, the bigger growth cycles, the bigger understandings. Uh, there is a deep and intense energy. The sun's bright, bright rays shining on all these energies means that we're really entering a turning point in the year, but it's bigger than just this year. It's bigger than just 2019 with Pluto involved. It's a turning point in humanity's trajectory. It's a huge time of letting go with Saturn conjunct the South Node. Because these planets are retrograde, it means there's things we're not seeing, they are hidden, they are behind closed doors, we don't see everything that is changing deeply, permanently, powerfully, but there's a lot going on that we feel, and that is the moon's ability to pick up on what is not seen, but to intuitively know that shifts are happening, there's no going back. This is probably the most powerful eclipse of 2019 because it is activating a whole new level of letting go, of clearing out of permanent changes that are happening at a, in a really big way, a really big cycle because of the fact that we have Pluto, Saturn, and the South Node all traveling together through Capricorn, clearing out, releasing. I mean, this is, again, it's no going back energies. And I've done some other podcasts for you on this very topic about the depth of these changes that aren't even seen yet. But the next set of eclipses coming up, which happen December 26th, 2019, and then January 10th, 2020, that is when the energies are direct and there's more that is forthright that comes out that's known. In July, we're experiencing part of a story that will be revealed in 2020. We sense it, we feel it. The moon is the public. The moon is the people. 
uh, it's the it's obviously our feelings, our connection to our everyday world. It's our spidey senses. It's our sense of something feels off, something feels different. There are big happenings in our world right now, and you can see those examples in many places, in many industries, in many areas of life. But it isn't going to be fully revealed until 2020 when these planets are direct and, of course, when Saturn is conjunct Pluto. But a very important part of the story is happening in July. And this is where there can be big revelations um, of what comes to light. Of what comes to light that transforms the people, the public's perceptions, Uh, The public's connection to government and power, integrity, what is right, what is just, what is fair, what is true. The reality checks. This feels, um, it can feel harsh. It really can. Especially with the softness and the vulnerability and the kindness of this cancer energy. So you can see we have team cancer over here, the sun in cancer, but then Venus, the feminine, especially in cancer, conjunct the north node in cancer, team cancer, team Capricorn, the split in our psyche, the split in our consciousness between Understanding that our world is changing deeply and permanently and therefore an aspect of us is as well. We are each having to rise in our sense of personal responsibility for ourselves, taking ownership of our lives, understanding what is, dealing with our actions, our choices. Uh, Capricorn's very real world. Uh, there's nothing that's hidden here. It's, I mean, what I mean by that is this is dealing with life as it is in front of you taking responsibility for yourself, and then the team cancer, which is your feelings, your emotional body, your need to want to hide, take a break, retreat, go into this softer part of you that also needs comfort and care as all of these changes unfold And I feel like a lot of what we're moving through that isn't yet known are the deep, permanent parts of ourselves that are here to create a new reality further down the road because things are ending. Again, no going back. A part of our world is changing permanently. And this is not seen yet, but we feel it. We can be uncertain, feel vulnerable, not know what it is. But the cancer energy here, especially with Venus, is to trust yourself, to trust your heart, to trust what you need, and to understand that you are equipped with the emotional compass that brings you back home to yourself as permanent changes unfold. And this North Node and Venus are making a lovely trine to Neptune, which has been providing us with the bigger spiritual lessons and understandings of this time. I feel like this Neptune is a beautiful connection to to God, spirit, source, angels, the universe, whatever terminology you use. This is the part of your soul that always feels safe and can move through all of the changes and move through all of the ways we each individually and collectively are letting go. So Capricorn is about profession, career, public status, how you're known, legal status. And this is also the axis of the family and the parents, Capricorn and Cancer. And so it can be triggering the where I've come from 
and where I thought I was going, but no, redirect, this is what I'm choosing now based on what I need, who I am, and what feels right, and it could be outside of societal expectations that I previously subscribed to and believed in and thought was right for me. Um, you know, it's a, it's a really common story, at least I've noticed with um, my own colleagues, fellow healers, is that you go into a corporate role or a job that you thought is going to be fulfilling and then you do that game or you stay in that place for a number of years or however long and then you return to who you really are and what's really in your heart and you follow that. So there's this sense of um, returning to what you know feels right for who you are. So that's the bigger picture here. Um, I do want to give you a heads up about some notable energies around this full moon. And uh, specifically, three days before this full moon, the sun will be at 21 degrees of Cancer, directly opposing Pluto. So this is a power struggle. This is something outside of you that has control over you that is even the illusion or the perception of being more powerful. Uh, typically, you know, this energy happens once a year. And so we're looking at where we're going and looking at how we are in alignment with ourselves and knowing that we can do this on our own terms, even if it means stepping away from what you thought was your power this is um a sense of okay the sun is saying this is your light and pluto is saying but this is your power and it can feel like they're on two separate sides of you your light and your power so there is a need here to reconcile or to find the way to honor these consciousness um energies within you i feel like this sun you know, as it moves forward here, it's understanding what it really loves, what's really in your heart. Um, as a planet moves through the third deacon, it's meant to have mastery. So there's something here where you're, even your heart can feel challenged. Um, this is the part of you that wants to stay safe, and this is the part of you that's pulling you into more of your power. That's also part of a Pluto opposition is that you could have the perception of your power outside of you, but it reminds you to do not give your power away. Do not give your power away. And then um, also right before this full moon is exact, when the moon enters Capricorn on July 15th, the moon is going to travel here conjunct Saturn, which is a reality check, a limitation, a restriction, um, saying, no, I, I, I don't have the energy. I can't do that today. You know, it'll be conjunct the South Node and it'll, it'll also be opposing Venus. So this can be an energy of retraction, emotional retraction. Then the moon goes across Pluto at 21 degrees and is faced with a fear. Pluto brings up our fears, emotional fear, transformation of it, um, awareness of it, awareness again of uh, perceptions of power. Then the moon comes up to this um, full moon, lunar eclipse. There's going to be some bumpy days, the middle of July, that are redirecting you. It's, it's a big letting go. I mean, it really is. And these lunar eclipse energies, they last um, for a minimum of six months, but they have different energy cycles. And I feel like this one lasts into 2020, simply because we're going to be revisiting these same themes throughout 2020. So whatever is coming up for you in July, give yourself time. Team Capricorn is about taking time to work through something to take responsibility to honor the cycles of time that are required in our daily lives. So then the moon gets to this full moon lunar eclipse, right? And it's a pow, it's a it's a big revelation. It's you didn't see something in your heart. It could be an emotional tug of war. Emotional tug of war. Tension. 
feeling split. I have to do this. I have to show up here. People are counting on me. I've got to stick with this job. It pays the bills. I've got to do this. My heart's over here. I'd rather be over here. I'd rather be on vacation. I want to go home. Where is my home now? Um, it brings up really big questions. And if you're experiencing that, I would like to say congratulations. You are right on time. You are right on time. Something about this energy can also feel um, emotionally big and, and even tearful. Um, it can feel like there's, there's a, a, a pain, an unacknowledged pain. There's a lot of energy here around parents, Saturn in Capricorn, Moon in Capricorn. Uh, really big around ancestral healing. Ancestral healing. And some of you are deeply healing the mother wound. I'm just getting this image of um, the grandmothers, the aunts, the sisters, the females that weren't able to do something in this life. They were restricted by beliefs of their generations. And some of you are being asked, oh my gosh, I'm like getting teary, to carry a torch of healing and you know it and you feel it and I know I'm talking to some of you and you're going to get support here in this lunar eclipse to heal the feminine energies in your family and that's going to be a big part of your soul's contributions and your soul's growth in this lifetime and, and into 2020. Okay, I wasn't planning on saying that. Um, you know, when I start these videos, I kind of have an idea of what I'll say, but I just trust what comes through intuitively. And we are each healing within ourselves um, the divine feminine energies. And that's a collective thing. It doesn't matter if you're masculine or feminine, the f or, or excuse me, um, it doesn't matter your gender or your sex. It doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. We all carry yin and yang, anima, animus. Um, the, the feminine, the masculine, and we're balancing our ability to receive. And this is actually reminding us to be in balance with your receptive nature because this is the workhorse, <laughs> all this Capricorn. Team Capricorn will work and work and work till 9 p.m. and then get up and be back at the desk at 6 a.m. This is... Um, saying that you need to come home to yourself, to your family, and to who you are now. So, um, by the way, after this moon hits the full moon exact, it's void, of course, which means it does not make an aspect to any other planet or point. The void, of course, moon is a time of contemplation, of allowing, of being in this big... It's like a big roller coaster, a big, a bigger understanding of what's changing in your heart, what has shifted, and what's changing in your life permanently. You're going to have revelations that come directly from your heart chakra. I feel it as a no compromise energy too. I'm feeling this as some of you are going to be like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this part of my life the same way anymore. I have to take it, make a change. I'm ready for a change. And the Capricorn energy is a cardinal sign. It's a new start. It's a new understanding of who you are now. And there's a sense of this responsibility. But remember, because we have responsibilities, this could be something planted in you. A seed is planted about what you're moving towards next that you... You're meant to allow time to get there. I remember um, I back in, it was 2013, I was writing my first book, um, The Art of Trapeze, and I was working as a contractor for a Fortune 500 company. I was paid really well. I had great hours, blah, blah, blah. I was like, get me out of here because these people are psychos. Like I didn't want to work with these people anymore. It was very karmic for me. It was very much about 
um, okay, I need to show up and finish what's going on. But what I did was I gave myself a timeline and said, okay, I'm going to save X amount of money so that by the time I'm ready to launch my book, I am done with this work environment that was really unhealthy for me. And yeah, healing came from it, but I knew a part of me was done. Or as a friend of mine said, you're ripe. <laughs> like you are ripe to go. So this is part of the overall trend right now is that you're seeing where you're done with something and now you're meant to make some concrete plans around where you're meant to go, where you're meant to go next. Okay, other energies here. Um, this... Mercury is retrograde and moving back to 24 degrees of Cancer. Hmm, that's interesting. 24 degrees of Cancer. So this Mercury moves back to 24 degrees of Cancer, the point, right, where we're um, experiencing this lunar eclipse, and we'll move back until the end of July, July 29th, which is also a new moon in Leo. So this Mercury is retrograde, and we are meant to take time the rest of July to really tap into more of our emotional messages, all these strong cancer energies around trusting your feelings, trusting your heart, trusting yourself, what feels right, what feels true. Uh, it's a very private energy, and this Mercury retrograde is saying, go there. Go back to your heart, okay? Now, this Mars at nine degrees of Leo is strong and he's marching forward warrior style to understand his strength now. And there is a part of you that's going to feel this. It's absolutely going to feel this and it's going to feel good, by the way. It's going to actually help with some of this other big changes. Uh, Mars just made both a square and a trine. Uh, to Uranus at six degrees of Taurus, Chiron, five degrees Aries. So this Mars, um, he's had some energy here shifted for him. By the way, Uranus is going to be stationing retrograde soon and Uranus is at six degrees of Taurus for about three months, okay, um, including July and August. Um, so if you have anything at six degrees of the fixed signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, Uranus um, is really shaking things up. Um, and then Mars moving ahead is going to make a trine to Jupiter retrograde at 15 degrees of Sag. Uh, this Jupiter is going to be going back until mid-August, retrograde until mid-August, I believe it's until 13 degrees, 12 degrees, 13 degrees of Sag. So he's going to get something expanded in his confidence, uh, creativity, courage, belief in himself to keep going forward. This Jupiter is really supporting all of us right now in believing in ourselves, believing in what's possible, believing in the adventure at hand. And I feel like this, um, the, the fire energy in this chart is really helping us stay lit. <laughs> to stay, uh, you know, fired up. And I just feel like it's invigorating. And it's like, I can do this, okay? There's a sense of this is possible for me. So it's quite a month. Take good care of yourself, as always, uh, during the time of cancer. And know that you're meant to make some changes right now. Wherever this 24 degrees of Capricorn is in your chart. It's bringing your attention right here. And both Pluto and Saturn will be at this 24 degree point next year in early 2020. So that's what I mean. Like this, this energy carries into the next year. You're realizing some things you're ready to change. And the universe is saying it's time because you're ready and because the world needs you in a different capacity now and the world needs you to find 
and connect to those messages in your heart that only you carry. We each have these unique understandings of ourselves, of what we're healing, and I feel like Team Capricorn is helping us to see who we've been, where we've come from um, in terms of work, career, who we are in the world. But Team Cancer is reminding you who you are in your heart. And then this awesome Neptune trine and sextile is reminding you uh, that you're above this time and space and you're above this reality and this place um, in the timeline of humanity. It's like that whole bigger picture that we carry with us. So it's quite a big lunar eclipse. Rockin' and rollin', Mercury retrograde, take it slow, be easy on yourself, be kind, be gentle, and the energy really shifts again uh, the end of July, beginning of August, as Mercury stations direct, and we have a new moon in Leo um, that kickstarts a new sense of confidence and courage. So, as always, everything is in perfect and divine order. You are tapping into more of your own power and your own choices, the choices you are here to claim that are true for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Feel free to watch it again because I know there was a lot in this. And I'll be back soon with a whole new look at the Leo New Moon. Uh, below this video, you will find the astrology classes I teach. And please listen to my podcast that I share with you twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays. And we talk about the ongoing uh, energies. I share with you intuitive messages, channeled messages, and anything that can help with our journey right now. Thanks, friends. I'll see you back here soon.